Hey y'all, welcome to Art of the Budget. My name is Nicole, my pronouns are she and her, and I live in the Pacific Northwest on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish Nations. And today I am um, bringing you some lighthearted content, um, and we're going to be baking bread. So about a year ago, just over, um, my friend Chanda shared some sourdough starter with me, and the rest is history. Um, I've tried several different recipes. I started with a really easy one that was like not intimidating at all, which I will post down below. Currently I'm using one from www.ilovecooking.ie and I will post um, that below as well. There's a video that goes along with that and a video for the first uh, recipe. So I'll make sure those are posted below. So in the recipe that I'm posting, um, it actually calls for mostly white uh, flour, I believe bread flour, and uh, some rye flour. I have never bought rye flour, and I may never buy rye flour, and I've just been using half and half a white bread flour and a whole wheat um, flour, half and half. So let's get measuring these things out. Oh, before we measure this stuff out, I'm going to show you how I feed my sourdough starter. Um, so I'm gonna insert that footage right here. First, I'm going to add a little bit of my starter. Just not even a quarter cup into this little jar. I'm gonna feed it with a kind of heaping tablespoon of flour. and a level tablespoon of water. I like to take a butter knife and just mix it up. And that's gonna go in the fridge for next week or next time I bake. I feed this once or twice a week and it's just fine for when I want to bake. If I know I'm going to do a lot of baking on the weekend, I might feed it. That's Junior. If I know I'm going to bake a lot on the weekend, I might take it out Wednesday night and feed it a slightly larger amount. Um, so this is about a quarter of a cup, so I feel like I could feed it up to three quarters of a cup of flour and the accompanying amount of water. The goal is about the same weight, so that's why I do the heaping, uh, heaping tablespoon of flour, level tablespoon of water, because they weigh about the same. You could use the scale. Um, so I'll keep it out on the counter and feed it every day so it will build up a lot. If I think I'm just gonna make one loaf of bread, I might just um, take it out Friday night, feed it a good amount, use it the next day, and then back in the fridge. So. Okay, so I'm gonna start with um, the 500 grams of flour, except I'm actually only going, only going to put 200 grams of the white, 200 grams of the whole wheat, and then I will knead the rest in later. So I've got some King Arthur flour. I don't really, I'm not loyal to any brand. I also have some Kroger whole wheat and some Stoneburr uh, white bread flour, whatever works. I've made it with just regular old um, generic flour from the store. I do find that I like the flavor a little more with the half, um, the half like white wheat flour and the half whole wheat flour. And I'm actually going to double the recipe. Okay, 
Next, I'm going to put in um, 100 grams. This is what the recipe calls for, but I'm actually going to double it. So 200 grams of mixed um, seeds and nuts. So sometimes I just bring out all the jars, but sometimes I bring out all the jars, but I've actually kind of gotten in the habit of mixing them all up in here. I've got walnuts. Uh, flax seeds, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, um, some buckwheat, some roasted buckwheat, and some oats, some old oats, and some quinoa, a tricolored quinoa. It looks really beautiful in the bread. I'm going to add the salt to this, so I'm going to zero this out. And my trusty salt pig. So we need 10 grams per pack per batch. Let's do a little extra, a little pinch extra. So that's that. I'm just gonna give that a mix. Add it into my bowl. Give that a mix. Next, I'm going to add uh, 325 mil uh, milliliters of water times two, so 650. Zero that out again. So I'm just curious, that's just under three cups. All right, so now finally, we're getting to the sourdough starter, which is right here. And as you can see, it's nice and frothy. I fed this last night. It's been sitting uh, about 24 hours. Uh, if you're leaving it out and it's warm, you may need to feed it, you know, as much as every 12 hours. Here it's pretty cool, and I think it's okay, um, 24 hours. I typically keep it in the fridge when I'm not about to bake with it. So I'm just mixing it up. And then I'm going to add... 300 gram I mean yeah 300 grams of sourdough starter and I'm going to do this kind of carefully I'm going to zero out my scale it's 30 40 okay I need 300 Okay, 263, 279, okay, 300. All right, so I'm actually just a little over. I am being pretty precise, but I'm not getting too wild about it. I'm going to mix this up. Sometimes I just dump it in and I don't mix it up. I don't think it matters. I have to say I'm pretty loosey-goosey about all the rules. Okay, so I'm just going to pour it in. I'm just going to mix it. Okay, so here I'm just measuring out 50 grams of the white flour, 50 grams of the whole wheat flour, which I'm going to knead into the dough. Okay, so I just tidied some stuff out of the way. Now I'm going to drop my dough on top of this. All right, I'm not a huge rule follower with the baking, but um, I do feel like if you put 
too much flour in, it can kind of mess with your dough. So that's why I leave some of it out and then I knead it in. For you clay artists, this part really reminds me of making wadding. And I basically just knead it as much as I can until I've got all the flour incorporated. I'm just gonna gently oil the bowl. And I'm going to plop this in. I'm just going to plop this in the bowl. I'm gonna cover that up for about three hours. Okay, so it is um, the next day actually, but ideally I think you do this step about three hours um, after the first step, uh, leaving it out in a slightly warm place to rise. Um, but let's get into the next step. Okay, so I'm just going to tip this out. It was slightly oiled, so it's pretty good coming out. I'm going to go ahead and deflate. It's a little bit hard because it was in the fridge, not um, out. And I've seen a few different ways to do this. Sometimes people will roll it in and roll it in. Um, but I often doing a slightly different way, but actually this is two loaves worth of bread, so I'm going to just break it in half. And set one of these aside. I'm going to deflate it, and I'm gonna bring it into the middle, overlapping. And then going to uh, create some tension and doing that by kind of rolling it this way, rolling it this way. And if I wanted it to be a boule, I would keep it round, but I want it to be a um, longer loaf, which is called a batard, I think. Okay, so just kind of creating that tension and do it the other way too, kind of tucking in those edges. And yeah, I mean, it's not so fancy, but it's done. I've got a banneton here. Uh, my housemate got this from a friend of hers who was giving it away, so that was pretty awesome. You can see there's a bit of flour in there. As this rises, uh, some parts of it may kind of get exposed, and so just to avoid it sticking to the banneton, I'm going to give it a little more flour, and then I've often given a bit to the top. Mostly, like I said, those sides where it might expand a little here. I'm going to flip it so the top is down inside of this, and I'm gonna let that uh, rise for a little while. The other one, I'm gonna do the same thing. You can see I'm not using flour for this part. Some people do, some people don't, and I have not felt like I needed to. So
thing. I only have one banneton, so I'm just using a low pan for my other one. And I'm gonna let that chill out in there. And I'll be back in a little bit. Next, I'll place my Dutch oven in the oven and preheat to 450. You do not need a Dutch oven. A cookie sheet works fine. Okay, while I've got that heating up, I'm going to score this. So I'm just going to dump it out onto this cookie sheet. And I'm going to... Can you see this? I'm going to slice a pretty deep slice and a few more. And then I'm going to gently lift that into the Dutch oven and let it cook. So you can see the lines from the Benetton make these like really pretty lines on the bread. going on here. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on the bottom. Okay, while I've got that heating up, I'm going to score this. So I'm just going to dump it out onto this cookie sheet. And I'm going to... Can you see this? I'm going to slice a pretty deep slice and a few more. And then I'm going to gently lift that into the Dutch oven and let it cook. And then I'm going to gently put that in. Sophisticated. Gloves back on. Put the lid on this baby. Setting the timer. For 10 minutes. I'm gonna let it steam for 10 minutes. And I'm gonna take the lid off and I'm gonna, gonna let it go for 30 more minutes, so a total of 40. So the timer just went off. I'm just gonna go in here and take off the lid to that. And we're gonna let that go for 30 more. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take the bread out now. It's got a nice crust. Bottom's not burned. We'll bring it up close. What's the bread? What's a beauty? So I'm gonna put the other loaf in and put this video together. See you later.